Hello and welcome to this video where I will be demystifying one of the trickier topics from the Advanced Taxation UK syllabus. My name is Aileen Edgar and I am an expert ACC Advanced Tax Tutor. Today I'll be taking you through the topic of VAT on land and buildings, focusing on areas where students can get confused with this area of the Advanced Tax syllabus. My aim is to help you feel more confident in your understanding of VAT on land and buildings in terms of the basic principles, as well as key issues to consider applying in your exam answer. I'm going to use some summaries and short, simple examples to help you get unstuck with this topic. The first place to start then is what are our key principles for VAT on any land or buildings that our client may face? In your exam, this is where you should start and there are often some easier marks to pick up to begin with for explaining how these principles impact your client in their specific situation. Remember that at ATX, you should be avoiding cookie cutter type answers and instead tailoring everything you do to your client's own specific situation. The general rule when we are supplying land or buildings in the UK is that it is exempt from VAT. A supply can be from a sale of or lease or renting out of the piece of land or the building. There are two exceptions to this general rule. Firstly, the sale of a new freehold commercial building is actually standard rated. So that means we use the 20% VAT rate. Remember, you're given that rate in the tax tables in your exam if you need it. By new, we mean it's less than three years old. The second exception to watch out for is the sale of a brand new building for residential or charitable use or the sale of a leasehold with more than 21 years to run. These are actually zero rated, so still a taxable supply, but at a rate of 0%. This is your starting point where you see land or buildings in a question and you're thinking about the VAT impact. But there is another possible outcome we may follow where the supply of a building or piece of land is exempt under those first principles that we've just looked at. We can actually choose to turn an exempt supply into a taxable one, which is known as opting to tax and requires an election to be made. The impact of this on the supplier, so the business that has made the election to treat this supply of land or buildings as taxable rather than exempt, is that they will now charge standard rate VAT on the rent or sale price, but by making a taxable supply, they can recover input tax suffered, which they may not have been able to do before. But you need to think about this from more than one perspective. What's the impact on the purchaser or on the tenant? You have just increased the sales price or their rent by 20% that might put them off. However, if they're using the property or land to make their own taxable supplies in their own VAT registered business, then they'll be able to reclaim it as input VAT suffered. So there wouldn't be any actual real increased cost to them. So you need to consider whether there's anything in the question to suggest what type of buyer or tenant your client might have. That way you can tailor your answer specifically to their situation and maximise your marks. Let's put some of this into an example now. The following clients have approached you for advice. Felicity has just bought a new studio for use in her ceramics business. Jax has just bought a second-hand warehouse to use for manufacturing air conditioning units. Bartholomew Bank has just bought a new building to add to its existing network of branches. Banking is an exempt supply. For each of these transactions, A, state whether the purchaser will be charged VAT, and B, if so, explain whether the input VAT can be recovered by the purchaser. First of all, let's consider Felicity. This is a new 
commercial building and we're not told whether it's freehold or not. So I'm going to assume it is and therefore it falls under one of our exceptions. And so VAT will be charged on the sale at the standard rate of 20%. So that answers part A. Part B, for that, we need to explain whether the purchaser can recover this as input VAT suffered. Felicity is using the building for creating ceramics. And so as long as she is VAT registered and making taxable supplies with her business, then she will be able to reclaim the VAT on this building. What about Jax? Jax had bought a secondhand warehouse to use for manufacturing air conditioning units. Sounds like they're making taxable supplies, but would VAT be charged in the first place on the supply of this warehouse? Well, it rather depends on how old this secondhand warehouse is. Remember that our default position is that the supply of land or buildings is exempt from VAT. And the exception that could be relevant here is the one where we charge standard rated VAT on the sale of new commercial buildings. This warehouse is a building, it's being sold, it is commercial as opposed to residential, but is it new? Again, we don't have all the information we might ideally like, but that's quite typical when you're dealing with clients. So what we will do is state our assumptions, but come to a conclusion. As it's second hand, it seems more likely that this is not an exception to the general rule, and so the sale will be exempt from VAT. That then means that there is no input VAT to be recovered on this sale. Finally, what about the bank? This was a new building purchased to add to its existing network of branches, so it sounds like it would qualify for that exception to the rule, and 20% VAT would have been charged on it. But we're told that banking is an exempt supply, and so that means that the building is not being used in order to make taxable supplies, and so the input VAT suffered by the bank on its purchase cannot be reclaimed from HMRC. So that's the type of process you'll need to work through for such transactions in order to decide on their treatment. Where there's not full information given to you in any question, you should consider different possibilities, state your assumptions and advise your client or manager of the consequences. Now, some final issues just to watch out for when you're dealing with VAT on land and buildings. Firstly, the wording used when describing the default rule and the exceptions to that rule are very precise and you need to ensure you memorise these very carefully. So, for example, where we say the sale of a new freehold commercial building, we're not talking about a rental. We're not talking about an old building. We're not talking about leaseholds. And we're not talking about residential property. We're not talking about land. With regards to the option to tax, there are a number of things to watch out for. You can decide to opt to tax on a property by property basis, but you can't choose to say opt to tax three floors of a building, but not the other four floors. An opt to tax election must be submitted to HMRC within 30 days of the decision being made, and that election is irrevocable apart from in the first six months or after 20 years has passed. VAT has to be charged on any future sale or rent, and any new owners are bound by previous elections apart from transfers within a VAT group. And finally, watch out for buildings which are purchased for more than £250,000 excluding VAT, as these will be subject to the capital goods scheme and their taxable use will need to be monitored for a 10 year period to see if the right amount of input tax is claimed back from HMRC. Thank you for watching and I hope this mini session on VAT on land and buildings has helped your understanding of this topic and what issues to consider when applying your knowledge to an exam question on this area.